Hello. Rosie friends. We are waiting for the Rosies to come out. In the meantime, I hope that you meet someone new today. If you are a guest speaker, please come and join me up here so that we can start getting everyone in order. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to keep this big kind of a semi-circle. And in a few minutes, we're going to get rolling. If you are a speaker that's not up here, we're looking for you. These beauties. Executive Director of the Capital Area Manufacturing Council. I'm excited to welcome you to Rosie the Riveter Day 2024. Today I look out at young ladies from our talent pipeline, five generations of women in the workforce, retirees, and Rosies. We've come together to forge connections that bridge the past, present, and future. Embrace the power within you, break barriers, and let your skills and passion continue to shape manufacturing. You are rock stars, and I'm excited to celebrate with you. Next, I'd like to introduce to you a friend of manufacturing, Lansing Mayor Andy Shore. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, welcome to all the Rosies and all the rosy friends and all the rosy allies. Um, what an honor to have these, these women right here in front of us. I got to speak with a few of them. Uh, between 99 years old and 100 years old it, and still going strong. So thank you to the Rosies for being here. We're a proud manufacturing city here in Lansing. Have been for a long time. It's in our blood. Uh, so I'm excited that you are all here. Uh, don't forget to go and check out our restaurants and spend some money while you're here. <laughs> Come on, I'm not the mayor if I don't say that. Come on. Uh, but no, it's, it's wonderful to have you all here. This gets bigger and bigger every year. Uh, I'm excited for this to become an annual event. Um, we do have a, a proclamation. I'm not going to read it because you've got a lot of folks here and, and uh, some, some, uh, some folks to share words with you. But, but we do celebrate uh, Rosie the Riveter. We celebrate um, the, the We Can Do It attitude. We celebrate all they did for us um, during the war and then so many years after. Um, so I get to do the fun part. Uh, I get to say, now, therefore, I, Andy Shore, Mayor of the City of Lansing, by the power vested in me, do hereby proclaim March 21st, 2024 as Rosie the Riveter Day in Lansing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yield the podium, but um, I will say um, one of the coolest, the, the, the old picture of the Rosie the Riveter, you know, doing this, um, it's, one of the, it's one of my favorite pictures. Of, uh, it just, it, you see it and you know without having to say anything. My second favorite is the picture of our governor uh, doing this as the Rosie the Riveter. You saw it all around the campaign, um, so I'm excited that she's going to be here. Um, it shows the importance of manufacturing of everything that the Rosies did for us. So I want to welcome you all to Lansing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all you do, and uh, keep staying strong. Thanks, everyone. Okay, today we are delighted to welcome to a, a very special person into our manufacturing family, someone whose enthusiasm for Rosie stood out immediately when I met with her. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to our event MC, Sherry Jones from WLNS. <laughs> Well, good afternoon, and thank you so much, Cindy. Let's give it up for Cindy Kangas. This woman is a powerhouse. She brought us all together today. Her heart is huge. Can you just take a minute and turn to the person next to you and tell them thank you for being here with us today on this glorious day? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen and fellow champions,
Veterans of Manufacturing, welcome to the second annual Rosie the Riveter Day. I, of course, am thrilled to be your MC for this momentous occasion. And we are here to pay homage to women who shaped our history. Today we unite to honor the legacy and to embrace equality. So let us get this riveting festivities going. A heartfelt thank you to all our generous sponsors. Let's give them a big round of applause. We appreciate them. They definitely help fuel our success today. Please help me welcome our very first speaker today, Dr. Misty Rice. She is the, with the Michigan Women's Commission on behalf of the governor. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of the governor, who's actually going to be here, but Today, as we celebrate Rosie the Riveter Day, we celebrate a legacy of strength and skill and resilience that transcends generations of Michigan women. It's a day when Governor Gretchen Whitmer, along with all of us at the Women's Commission, extend our gratitude and our appreciation to those who continue to champion the spirit of Rosie in every field and every endeavor. Rosie embodies the spirit in the invaluable contributions of women in manufacturing and beyond. She is a powerful reminder of the progress we've made and the work we still have ahead of us, promoting inclusion, equality, and opportunity in the workforce. In her unwavering commitment to these ideals, Governor Whitmer has spearheaded initiatives such as the TriShare uh, Child Care Program and quintupling, yes, that's a word, quintupling the work, <laughs> working families tax credit to directly address the unique challenges faced by women and families in Michigan. These efforts demonstrate a commitment to supporting working parents, embodying the next generation, and making education and skill training accessible to all. Yet, as we stand here, we're reminded today that our journey is over, not over. Persistent gender gaps in labor force participation and stark underrepresentation of women in STEM fields, apprenticeships, and higher wage careers underscored the need for more action. In Governor Whitmer's balanced budget, she proposed the Michigan Guarantee, which would deliver pre-K and community college for every child, saving Michigan families thousands of dollars directly ad addressing the disparities to level the playing field and grow our economy. As we stand here today, Governor Whitmer urges us to reflect on the progress we've made, recommit ourselves to a generational cause of expanding economic opportunity. Together, we can tackle the existing challenges, advocate for supported policies, and ensure that every Michigander um, has an opportunity to thrive. Governor Whitmer's wit message to us is clear. Our dedication, passion, and commitment to making history are what inspires the Rosies of tomorrow. The little fellow that, the rose buds that keep coming up the stairs. Um, it's on us to forge ahead, breaking down barriers, up and hold the values of that Rosie the Riveter in, uh, represents, a world where gender is no barrier to success. Together, let's embrace the spirit of Rosie as we and these lovely, lovely women that we hopefully all had the opportunity to meet and speak with. And, and let's embrace that spirit and strive to create an inclusive, equitable, prosperous future for us all. And thank you, thank you all for, on this very cold day for coming out and your unwavering commitment to this cause. And let's make history together across our state. Thanks, Misty. Thank wow. you. Uh, all right. Hi, everybody. Hello to all the Rosies. Make some noise. I'm so glad to see you all rocking the red bandana and the blue coveralls. Today is about celebrating tough, hardworking women. If you want to get something done, who do you ask? Women. A busy woman, because she'll put it on her list and she'll get it done. If you want to meet the textbook example, look no farther than the women from Michigan. There's a reason that Rosie is based on a woman from Ypsilanti, Michigan. We are built differently, right? And these four original Rosies, let's hear it for them. women stand up and we fight for our families, we fight for our communities, we fight for one another and our fundamental rights. Together we have protected our fundamental freedom to make our own decisions. We've made it easier for every generation to go to school or to enter a trade without going into debt. 
We've expanded economic opportunities and delivered on the issues that make a real difference in people's lives. And we have to keep showing up and we have to continue to have one another's backs. We will continue to fight to protect each other's rights and we will keep breaking down doors, shattering ceilings and building the ladder so the next woman behind us can do even more. So I thank you for showing up today. I thank you for showing up every day, whether it's in your workplace, in your home, raising the rosebuds, whether it is in your community or in your place of worship, your voice matters, your voice makes change and your voice is not just on your behalf, it's on all of our behalf. So I'm honored to be among you, Rosies. I am thankful for the work that you do. And let's get it done. Continue with this, this march toward equality and equity and justice by working together and adopting the motto of the U.S. women's soccer team, which is LFG. You can figure out what it means. Let's go. Thank you, everybody. Let's give another big round of applause for our governor, Gretchen Whitmer. No, that's fine. We're all we're loving this. This is momentous. Get the little rosebud in there too, don't you think? <laughs> Thank you again, Governor Whitmer, for those enthusiastic comments. We appreciate you so much. We're going to welcome our next speaker to the podium, Ms. Tabitha Spadosky, lean manufacturing leader from our sponsor, Altium Cells. Please welcome her. Thank you and good afternoon. I am so incredibly honored and proud to be here today on behalf of Altium Cells. The Lansing area has a rich history of manufacturing excellence, and today, as Ultium Cells prepares to begin production of electric vehicle batteries, we celebrate the rosies that will help us continue that legacy in Lansing's manufacturing industry. Rosie the Riveter has been significant to me as long as I can remember. In speaking with a friend recently, I was surprised to hear her ask who Rosie the Riveter was and what was her significance. A quick search pulled an image, and my friend said, oh yes, I recognize her, and uh, most people do. I proceeded to explain what Rosie represents and the impact she's had on women in manufacturing and in the workforce. This caused me to think more in depth about when Rosie became a significant figure to me. I found that she has been significant throughout my life because I come from three generations of proud Michigan manufacturing workers, many of them women. I found that she has been significant because I'm a woman that started my manufacturing career in production nearly 20 years ago, and I felt comfortable that other strong, hardworking women worked at my side. I found that she has been significant because I and other women like me have so much pride to provide quality goods that power our industries, our communities, and our lives. The manufacturing industry in Michigan has supported my family for generations, and I'm proud to continue the traditions from those before me. Rosie represents the pivotal era when courageous women laid the groundwork for future generations of women to enter the manufacturing workforce, and I will continue to explain her significance to remind women that we are capable and we are strong. Altium Cells is proud to continue the legacy of Rosie by championing opportunities for women to grow through career opportunities, through STEM education. Altium recognizes that diversity, equity, and inclusion are central values to a culture of innovation and growth. So today, we honor the Rosies of the past that brought us to this place of inclusion in manufacturing. We celebrate the Rosies of today that produce the goods sold here and around the world. We empower the Rosies of the future that will drive improvement and excellence in STEM careers. We are Rosies and we can do it. Thank you.
Thank you, Tabitha. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor right now to welcome a remarkable young woman in our community who's very interested in STEM, Alana Root from Holt High School, and we invite her to share her insights. So let us be inspired by the tenacity of the talent pipeline that we're seeing right now in our community. So please join me in giving a warm welcome to our student speaker, Alana. Uh, I would just like to start off by saying how happy I am to be here. Uh, I'm currently a senior in high school, and as I near the end of my school career, I am scared for what's next. Um, my plan is to go to college and make it to medical school and become a surgeon, but the what-ifs creep in sometimes and make me think about possibly failing or giving up. And every time I get in my head, I have to think like Rosie and say, I can do it. Like her, I'm a strong, independent woman, and I can achieve my goals in life with optimism and focus. Going into the medical field, I know that I'll have to work hard. And going into the medical field as a woman, I know I'll have to work harder than any man has to. I've overcome so much in my short life, and I'm proud to be here today trying to represent what Rosie stands for. Rosie will always be an inspiration to all women, letting us know that we can do anything a man can do. I'm going to MSU in the fall, and I'm majoring in human biology so that I can help the greater good, just like all Rosies have throughout history. I'm taking steps towards my future so I can eventually prove that as a woman, I can do it. Now, before I end, I would like to thank my teacher, Ms. Russo, for encouraging me to do this and helping me throughout my past two years of high school, and I couldn't have done it without her. Thank you for listening. You can do it, Alana. Yeah. <laughs> we are honored today to have a representative from PNC Bank with us. Nancy Johnson from the private bank team is here to share her insights and expertise on the really pivotal role of women in business. Miss Nancy Johnson. Good afternoon. On behalf of all of my colleagues at PNC Bank, it's truly an honor to once again serve as title sponsor for this event. PNC is celebrating Women's History Month throughout our entire corporate footprint, so this celebration is an ideal fit. As bankers, we are well aware of the impact women have on our economy. For example, women-owned businesses are among the fastest growing business segment in the United States. The number of wealthy women is growing faster than the number of wealthy men. And finally, some studies show that women represent as much as 80% of all consumer purchasing. Needless to say, women executives are changing the face of business from coast to coast. Thank you to all of the sponsors and the manufacturing councils across Michigan that put this special day together. A special thank you to the Rosies who are able to be with here, us today we look forward to celebrating your great work and hearing from those who continue your legacy. Okay, we have several attendees here from Local 602. Where are you? My, oh, my friends and my sisters. Okay, please help me welcome my friend, DeAsia Johnson, who wrote a poem to honor the Rosies. It is an honor to be here with you all today, and especially to be here with you, Rosies. <clears throat> honor and Rosie, we can do it. Yes, we can. We can do the job of any man. We work hard to see the fruits of our labor. We are amazing wives, loving mothers, and good neighbors. World War II brought Rosies into the workforce. Unknowingly, it put women on a course to survive and thrive on the plant floor. Some would say the war opened the door. They let Rosies and minorities into the shop, manufacturing planes, war materials, and such. The Rosies retooled from peacetime to war. Propaganda signs increased. America needed more. More Rosies to rivet, more Rosies to build it. During those years, productivity went up and cycle time went down. Quality improved to help our troops in the air and on the ground. Stepping out of their domestic roles, Rosies became real American heroes. 
After the war, many Rosies left the shop floor, but that five years left some women wanting more. Today, you can see Rosies all around, strong, courageous, and full of might. They are unafraid of challenges. They work hard day and night, laboring tirelessly to bring food to the table. These Rosies are ready, willing, and able to do the job that make ends meet. They have pride in their work, and that's hard to beat. We are thankful for all the Rosies who paved the way. We applaud them and honor them today and every day. We salute you because you did it. We know we can. A true American hero and a powerful one man. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for being here and joining us for a second annual Rosie Day. I personally want to give a big shout out to Cindy Kangas for pulling us all together once again. I'm Olivia Steele from Jackson Area Manufacturers Association and I would like to thank our sponsors today. Please hold your applause and help me thank All TM Cell, PNC Bank, Friedland Industries, General Motors, Choose Lansing, Envio Automation, Maynard Castarian, Peak Manufacturing, Capital Steel and Wire, Lansing Board of Water and Light, Michigan Manufacturers Association, and LEAP. Well, as you connect with your loved ones today, I really encourage you to explore your family history, maybe delving into their experiences during World War II. It's amazing. If you really take the time and have that conversation, you're going to learn things about your family that you really didn't know. I know that my grandmother and my grandfather had a farm, and when the war ended, they took their pots and pans and went outside and made a whole bunch of racket, and so did my mom. She was just a little pipsqueak, but those stories come back to you, and it's really powerful part of our, the fabric, working in farms, working in factories, and um, we celebrate all of that today. Your family stories will help keep the rosy legacy going for years to come. So next, please help me welcome Carrie Rosingana, CEO of Capital Area Michigan Works. She actually brought her daughter Eleanor here to share their family rosy story. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Carrie Rosengana. I'm the CEO at Capital Area Michigan Works, and I truly am honored to be here, and it's even more special because my daughter is here with me. Um, Rosie the Riveter Day is a day for the Lansing community to celebrate the storied history of women in manufacturing and the women who started it all, World War II Rosie the Riveters. As the CEO of my organization, I know the important role that manufacturing has in our Tri-County region and the critical roles that women in manufacturing hold here. This day is also personally important to me because my grandmother, Dorothy Campbell, was a Rosie. My grandma moved by train to California from Michigan with her brother Harold to help support him when he was stationed there. She became a riveter at the Douglas Long Beach plant in California. The U.S. Army Finance Douglas Aircraft plant in Long Beach was the largest whale wartime plane manufacturer. Her favorite story that she liked to tell about working there is that she worked inside some of the large bombers, and at the end of the day, she had the opportunity when her shift was done to slide down a slide from inside of those bombers and to slide out of them, and she thought it was the best thing ever. <laughs> my grandma married my grandpa in California when he returned from his time overseas in the military, and when my grandma's time as a riveter ended, she moved to Texas with my grandpa, and she continued working. She earned an on-the-job certificate in maintenance supply, 2nd Air Force technical training on August 20th, 1945, and she moved back to Michigan eventually and had a family, which included Included my dad, who's here with me, Larry. My grandma loved to talk about the adventures that she had from her younger years, including being a riveter. And I remember being in awe of the stories she shared and incredibly proud to have such a strong woman as my grandma. 
My grandma was bold. She was independent. She was adventurous. She was strong-willed and ahead of her time in so many ways. She loved deeply. She was one of the hardest working women I've ever met. And she was also known to swear like a sailor, which I thought was pretty cool as a kid. <laughs> I'd like to think that I share many of her similar personality traits, key among those the importance of being a hard worker, taking pride in my chosen career, and to take care and love those around me deeply. My grandma's legacy, just as with the other amazing Rosies that we honor today, is felt daily with my family, and her stories continue to be told, including to my own daughter, Eleanor. In fact, one of my daughter's favorite books, Rosie Revere, Engineer by Andrea Beatty, is inspired by Rosie the Riveter. It is truly an honor to be a small part of today's celebration in recognition of the women who have inspired so many, including my family's own Rosie, Dorothy. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jeanette Gutierrez of the American Rosie the Riveter Association. And I have some of my friends and members right down here. The American Rosie the Riveter Association was founded in 1998 by the World War II Rosies themselves for fellowship and to preserve their legacy. And as part of preserving their legacy, we invited the National Association of Women in Construction to host a Rosie the Riveter student contest. And we have some of the entrants of that contest here with us today. We have Ambal Kocheri Ajithakumar from uh, Frost Middle School, Livonia. We have Hunter Holbert here with us today. We have Elisa Mui. We have Shang Shang Zhao. And we have Nanya Vandrangi. And we have Grace Kelly. Um, these are our student entrants who are here with us today. Along with Linda Kowalski from Frost Middle School, a teacher, and Shannon Wheeler, the principal of Frost Middle School. And we also have the wonderful women of the National Association of Women in Construction. Um, we have Kristen Zerlag and Andy Wright. And I want to thank all of these folks for helping us to celebrate Rosie and all of the women in the trades. Thank you and congratulations. Chris Metz from Dowding Industries carries with her a very rich legacy of manufacturing as she hails from a long line of industrious individuals whose dedication and skills have shaped the local industry. Please join me in welcoming her to share her interesting and inspiring perspective. Welcome everybody. This is a pretty amazing event. I have, um, I have a group of girls behind me, women, and um, we're getting in order, so. <laughs> All right, welcome everyone to such a special day to celebrate the amazing Rosies that were pivotal in securing our country's freedom during World War II. We and generations to come are forever indebted to your efforts I'm getting emotional, which ensured factories would stay working while the men and women went off to war to keep the American dream of freedom alive. Our business tagline is making an impact and leaving a legacy, and the impact that your generation of men and women left us is the ability to gather today in freedom. And how do we ever thank you? for allowing us to be in a free country to raise our children. When I was asked to speak today, I thought, wow, what am I gonna say? And I thought, well, you know what I wanna talk about is the array of jobs and careers that are available to women in manufacturing. So I asked a group of girls, a group of women, to come up and, and be with me today. We are celebrating 59, we're 59 years old this year, and next year we're gonna be celebrating 60 years of business. And it's amazing what 59 years of business has done for our community, 
for our customers and for our associates. And we are very excited to be celebrating that next year. What better way to talk about the careers that are available in manufacturing than to introduce five very special ladies. So please hold your applause to the end because I was only supposed to have three minutes and I'm gonna go over. So um, <laughs> the first one up is Sadie Yoakum. Sadie has an associate's degree in business accounting, business and legal accounting. She's been with Dowding for 25 years. She's a, she was a single mom of three children, all while she charted a career path to be the logistics and customer service manager. She is also a part of our L10 leadership team. Thank you, Sadie. Next up is Carmen. Carmen's dad was walking across our yard 11 years ago, maybe 12, and he says, hey, would you consider hiring my daughter? She just graduated from Olivet College slash university now. And I said, well, have her send her application over. We'll take a look. The team hired her on the spot. 11 years later, Carmen is our corporate launch development manager, and she manages 12, sometimes 15, men that are engineers and designers. <laughs> She's only come to me once in tears, so heads up. And she is also a proud new mama. Next up is Sharnice Wright. Sharnice has uh, graduated from Everett High School way past lo when Magic Johnson was there and made Everett. <laughs> Made it, put, put Everett on the, on the map. Uh, Sharnice started in medical, she studied medical billing and coding, and five years ago she found her way to doubting. She started in our, she started in our um, operating a press, and she started signing up for all the classes that we put on. She did so well in her strength finders class that they said, hey, do you want to come and work with customers? We need someone to be in our customer service department. So Sharnice said, sure, I'll try it. And customers love her, Sadie's team loves her, and she's soon to be a grandma of twins. <laughs> Next up is Ekaterina Harris. And you might be able to tell from the name that she uh, isn't quite an American name. <laughs> Ekat um, came, she was adopted from Russia. Uh, she's from the St. Petersburg, Russia area. She was adopted when she was nine. She had to teach herself English because um, we didn't have interpreters. And my sister and my brother-in-law ad adopted her. She taught herself English. She went on to graduate from Olivet High School and she went on to graduate from Bear University. Her dad thought he kind of wanted to retire, so he put her in charge of their 18-person fab and, and um, laser shop in Marshall, Michigan. Ekaterina Harris. Next up is Carly LaPrat. Did I say it right? Close enough? <laughs> I like Carly Edwards. That was easier. <laughs> Carly, like me, was born into manufacturing. However, she's third generation. Her grandfather started a brass foundry company in East Lansing, Michigan, 100 years ago this year. In June, they're going to celebrate their milestone of 100 years and celebrate what their grand her grandfather did. They have 33 employees, and she rejoined the company about six years ago. She has an undergrad in communications from Villanoma, and she just received her master's degree from Michigan State in business administration. Carly is now the president for a year and a half um, of her company that she rejoined about six years ago. And then the last one up is gonna touch everybody's heartstrings. Her name is Sarah Case. And in today's economy, when things are so tight, we're seeing so many people that are homeless. Sarah came from a homeless family. They lived in a, eight of them lived in a van in Battle Creek for five years until Sarah got the courage to go to someone, I think, I think it was at a Walmart, and ask for help. She found her way into the foster care system and she landed at one of Dowding's other Rosies, Rebecca Roberts, <laughs> Rebecca Roberts and Gina Roberts' home. She got back into school. She graduated from Marshall High School. 
she um, got her driver's permit, she tried Western and decided she'd rather come back and work where her foster parents do at Dowding. She's now a critical person in our shipping um, area and I hear rumor that a couple of the older Dowding Rosies are arm wrestling for her to be their replacement when they decide to retire. <laughs> One's waving her hand right down there. <laughs> Last, I'd like to inter introduce, we have 43 amazing women from Doubting that came. And I, I just can't thank them enough for being here today. And we have quality people. We have brake press operators, we have machinists, we have robot operators, we have welding operators, we have women welding. I cannot believe how many women are welding in our shops. They're, they're wagging, they're, they're jumping around back there. We even have two riveting jobs. We actually have women riveting parts at Dowding. So I just thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for your support to come and honor these women from World War II that have given us our freedom. Five amazing women, five diverse backgrounds, 43 amazing women who have found a job and a home in manufacturing. I just want to thank all the men and women for their hard work in supporting each other. We couldn't do this if the men weren't helping us too. So I'd like to give a shout out to all the men that supported these women in their career paths. We are all so very proud to be 21st century's Rosies. God bless America. Thank you. And God bless you all.